I counsel patients about complicated complications for their babies every day. And right now the only option I can give in a situation like that is traveling out of state, leaving their family, and having to spend money to travel and fly somewhere else. And even that isn't clear if that's something maternal medicine doctors can do these days in Idaho, recommend their patients travel out of state for an abortion. Okay, that was Dr. Lauren Miller a little more than a month ago talking to us about how Idaho's abortion bans are putting doctors in a precarious position when it comes to how they're allowed to treat their pregnant patients. Sure, the original va vague language of the law was cleaned up a bit this last legislative session, but even that fix didn't do enough, says Dr. Miller, who is the organizer of the Idaho Coalition for Safe Reproductive Health Care. How close to death does a patient have to be before her doctor can act, perform an abortion to save her life? That question is leaving doctors in the dark or they're just leaving the state altogether. Dr. Miller actually conducted a survey of 117 physicians and advanced practice providers during the legislative session asking if Idaho's abortion laws are driving doctors away. The question was, are you considering relocating out of state in the next year? 48 of them said they're seriously thinking about it. 42 said, no, they're not planning on leaving. But 27 said, well, they're kind of considering it. And then if you are planning on or considering leaving, is it because of Idaho's restrictive abortion laws? Of the 75 that said they were thinking about it or considering it or were seriously thinking about it, 97%, 73 of them said, yes, it's because of Idaho's restrictive abortion laws. Of the 10 doctors with her level of expertise in the state of Idaho, by the way, Dr. Miller told us two are already leaving as a direct result of Idaho criminalizing abortion. That's 20%. And it's not just reproductive health care providers that are feeling the pinch of politics in Idaho. Dr. Ted Epperly, formerly of the Central District Health Board, currently the president and CEO of a residency program here in the Treasure Valley. Dr. Epperly says we're not just at risk of losing practicing physicians because of our laws, but future physicians too. He told Boise State Public Radio in March, he interviewed 400 of his potential students to his residency program, and he said he expects one in five, 20%, to choose to train somewhere else, outside of Idaho, which is significant because, according to the Association of Medical Colleges, a majority of doctors stay in the state where they are trained. And it's not just the abortion laws. Idaho now bans puberty blockers and hormone therapy for minors. And it's not just the physicians who are frustrated with the path Idaho is taking when it comes to these private decisions between a patient, their family, and their health care provider. Those whose job it is to hire and retrain them or retain them are having a problem with it too. We have providers that are deciding to leave this wonderful state because of the political extremists and the, and the political views that are distressing to health care workers. Odette Bellano is the president and CEO of St. Alphonsus Health System, the second largest in the state. Odette said what she said last week at the introduction of Idaho Leaders United. It's a group of business and law enforcement leaders who hope to rid Idaho of political violence and extremism. This idea about a brain drain, people choosing to take their talents elsewhere or not come at all, is something we've heard before. But when we heard the leader of the only advanced trauma center in the state say it, we had to ask more about it. She told us when people or companies consider moving here from out of state, they ask about infrastructure and they ask about health care, the two things that matter most when deciding where to live. If you ask any hospital CEO or health system CEO, what's their number one focus? It's workforce. You add a disadvantage of political extremists in your state, you have much more work to do. I'll read this back to you. You said, we have providers that are deciding to leave this wonderful state. Because of the political extremists and the, and the political views that are distressing to healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. What did you mean by that? Can you be specific? Yeah. I can tell you that uh, maternal fetal medicine physicians who are critical to very complex, complicated pregnancies are choosing to leave. We've lost two-thirds of our MFMs, what we call them MFM, physicians in the last month. Wow, that's and, a lot. And the state, I, I won't talk for others, but the state has lost at least another four. And there's only about nine or ten in the entire state. How many are we talking, like numbers? How many do you guys have? So we have three. Three. We're down to one who is looking to um, retire in six months. It's not only the uh, maternal fetal medicine physicians that are feeling 
a, a lot of anxiety of how do they practice medicine in a state where they feel very vulnerable to being prosecuted, but how do then those obstetricians that depend on them for those high complex pregnancies, how do they feel and how do they practice without the expertise of that complexity care? So it's a domino effect. It's a very much, and then you, you also have across the state family practice uh, physicians that do delivery, especially in our rural areas, and the lack of support that they may be feeling, and they're one removed from an obstetrician. And ability to recruit at this point is very, very um, limited. Uh, we're just not getting people apl applying for those positions. We've had a number of physicians that even before they come to interview with us, that many times the first question is, well, I think I really want to come, but I'm not sure about the political climate and whether or not I want to subject myself and my family to that. So we've had many physicians, I won't know for a, for a fact that it was that, but after those conversations, they don't even return our call. Is it just maternal medicine? No, an orthopedic uh, surgeon that we were um, interviewing just stopped talking to us at some point had the same thing happen in cardiology. So no, it's just not maternal fetal medicine. It's not just uh, obstetricians. You can't help but thinking, obviously, it's the laws that are kind of leading to this. Not necessarily the political climate, but the actual laws that are kind of changing the way people want to stay or come to Idaho. Well, and I would also um, say that some of the rhetoric that comes out during the legislative session, for example, I believe that there was someone who was trying to introduce a bill that criminalized providers that provided the COVID vaccine. Yep. So it's, it's all over the place, right? Physicians go into medicine, healthcare workers, I'm a nurse by background, went into medicine to help and serve others. When you're thinking that your profession could actually lead to you being criminally charged I think that you consider whether you come into a very difficult environment. If Idaho loses half of its advanced practiced physicians when it comes to these fields, and 20% across the border saying we don't want to go there, what's the outlook for Idaho? Yeah. When it comes to healthcare? I would say it's pretty grim if we don't do something about it. Who needs to hear this? I think the people of Idaho need to hear this, right? We need everybody to stand up, to join us in our coalition, denouncing political extremists, bigotry, and hate. What about the lawmakers? I think the le legislators, right? We are hopefully a government of the people for the people, right? And I think that they need to listen to the majority of the residents of Idaho, that we want to be inclusive, that we want to make sure that we have civil discord that we have discussions and that we make the right decisions with all information and not have political extremists driving the entire state. So staffing in the medical field is not anything new and it's certainly not unique to Idaho. There's a shortage across the country right now that could lead to a deficit of about 120,000 primary care physicians over the next 10 years. Odette says they've offered incentives at St. Alphonsus, like signing bonuses to draw applicants. They've looked internationally. They've considered apprenticeships. They've even tried to encourage middle school students to get them early into a medical field track. Just hopefully they can turn this trend around by the time those kids grow up. But right now, their biggest obstacle is the political climate, as you heard her say, and the rhetoric and things like doxing and the physical and verbal violence health care workers face on a daily basis. And of course, the result of that climate. Odette didn't want to say the quiet part out loud, but, but we can. It's the laws that handcuff doctors who just want to help people, doctors who could actually end up in handcuffs themselves should they decide on a procedure that considers the health of the mother, not just the life, but the health of the mother, or the gender identity of a teenager. It's the laws.